Hi, I'm Anna from Astro Lady Tarot. I got a request on Instagram when I asked what you wanted to see to do a video about recuperation after doing a lot of tarot readings or studying the tarot, learning about tarot, reading books. Let me read you the comment. Sometimes when I study tarot by readings or books, I feel tired and mentally fatigued after a few days of studying. I'll need a day or, I'll need a day or two break before I return to it. Maybe a video on energy usage recuperation that is paired with studying and readings. I thought that was a really good one because I know all about it. <laughs> we get a little impatient, we get a little bit overexcited. Yeah, let's talk about it. I um, often, and still do, <laughs> study the tarot, by that I mean learning, taking notes, you know, trying to remember, doing these exercises, all that stuff. I study until uh, the words on the page actually start to dance around. Either that happens when I work with tarot for myself, or um, I'm at, for instance, a spiritual fair where you just do readings back to back, and so that is very tiring. Um, so, in either one of those instances, <laughs> how I feel the day after is kind of like a hangover, and I have lovingly given that the term tarot hangover. I'm sure some of you can relate. Uh, it's when it's really you had the tarot overload, and the next day it's really just, it, it is kind of like a hangover. There is a difference, of course, and I'm going to address that. Um, when reading for myself or learning for myself, studying, I can stop whenever I want to, and of course, when I'm at a spiritual fair or wherever, any type of event where I do tarot readings, I, of course, still can stop whenever I want to, whenever I need to, but the difference is, um, that's not the point, because I want to do as many readings as possible that day, or those days, that weekend. Relating this to a spiritual fair um, is starting out with like the most hectic th thing, the most hectic event a tarot reader can go to. What I experience is that I get headaches, it gets, the further along the day, uh, it gets harder for me to concentrate on what people are telling me, um, it's tiring, and at a certain point I do kind of want it to end. <laughs> but I still love it. Because, yeah, you know, it, it, it is hard work for us who know that or something similar. Um, it still is hard work, even if you like it, but even if you love it. So I really start to feel like that until the next sweet person walks by and wants a reading. So actually the choice is quite easily made because I'm there to read for as many people as possible and to have that interaction, to have a nice experience. The reason that we endure all of that and we can actually carry on is because we love what we do and we have found our own personal way of kind of not let those signs of fatigue bother you, bother us. Uh, at this point that might sound a little bit unhealthy but I don't think so. It's just about holding on. It's just about you have to keep going. You know, we know that the fair is very hectic. We know that the fair is very busy. We know that there are the circumstances aren't always great. Sometimes you have to talk a little louder than you are, you know, naturally, than your voice naturally goes. Uh, sometimes the lights are a little bit... All of that, all of those circumstances don't really matter because we get such nice experiences out of it and we see that we can give it to other people as well. And I'm an introvert. I recuperate by being alone, actually, by having some quiet time. So maybe that does kind of hit a little bit harder, maybe? But I'm sure I'm not the only one. And it's okay because usually the next day is a day off and I can actually really do treat that day as if I have a hangover. Except I'm probably happier, healthier, and just overall, uh, you know, happier about my life choices. The standard recuperation method is really just use your common sense. It's about sleeping enough, eating right, drink water, and also maybe a little bit of emotional <laughs> advice also. Uh, some of us, when we feel tired, we feel like we are sad or miserable. And just set your mind to you're just tired you're not sad, you're not miserable. I mean, probably not, right? Because you've had 
you've just had that great experience the days before, uh, actually you're probably feeling really satisfied and even proud of yourself. So you're just tired. And after all that interaction overload, the cards stay untouched the next day. I really feel I've had interaction overload, tarot overload. I could do the guru thing or something and advise you to meditate the next day or something along those lines. And I think, um, sure, if that works for you, then please, by all means, do it or do some yoga or something. But uh, for me, speaking from personal experience, for me, that's just a no, because that, that whole energy, that did go out. I did, I did give that away. And so I really need to do nothing for a little while so that I can basically replenish that energy, that I can, I can get it back and then I will do something, you know, like meditation that actually does require a certain type of uh, concentration that I will not have at that point. Or yoga, I mean it's not just mental fatigue, it's also physical, your voice, your back probably. We know from the start that the fair is an unusual circumstance and we should be prepared for it to be busy because that's the whole point. And I do see a difference between studying at home alone and doing tarot readings at a fair, the most hectic ex example I can give. There is a difference in what I think is best to do. Um, I'm sticking to the <laughs> example of the spiritual fair. That is just about holding on, like I said. So I said before that we are almost kind of ignoring the signs of fatigue, but actually that's just a way of, that's how you keep going. That's how you can, uh, you have to find a way to keep your energy like on the same level throughout, during the day, throughout the day. And of course you have to listen to your body, so for instance, drink when you need to drink, eat when you need to eat, stuff like that. But make sure that you're comfortable so that you can get into that routine. Find a way to use up less energy so that you can keep going for a longer time. And try to um, distribute your energy evenly. Because when you get the hang of that, that way you can give, you know, the nice readings to someone. It's about having that nice experience and it's about uh, staying focused. It's really about giving someone a nice custom personal reading with the right kind of attention and the right amount of attention. That's what you want. And you have to find a way to focus on the person sitting in front of you or the cards or the energy between you and the person. What we need to find, find and then ma maintain, is um, a type of uh, just relaxation, really. Maybe some grounding exercises. Relax in who you are. Relax in what you're doing there. Uh, where you're, when you're at the point of reading for others, you know what you're doing. So trust that. And trust that you're not, you're not focusing in the back of the head with all that stress stuff. With all that stuff, oh my god, how am I... How am I going to cope with this? How am I continuing this throughout the day? No, you're actually looking the other person in the eye and making a connection and that, in a sense, also gives energy back. You're not just all giving it away. You, at the end of the day, that is how you feel. But <laughs> during the day, it's, it's just nice. It's that, yeah, the bonding experience, I guess. I really do miss the spiritual fair. It didn't happen uh, this 4th and 5th of April and I'm kind of, you know, it's already gone now, but... Okay, so now the whole reading for others... I guess we've talked about that. Now let's focus a little bit more on the question itself, because that was kind of like a another thing, but still related. Studying the tarot for yourself. My first few thoughts I had about this is that it should not look like the Ten of Wands. This is really the energy of overload, too much, and um, yeah, you know, especially the, the darker side of this card is that we're ignoring that the break is actually supposed to be a part of the process. When you're in the mode of studying, 
and learning and observing and experimenting and all that stuff for yourself. Now I'm talking about tarot, but it can be anything, of course, that you're learning about through books or stuff like that. It's no use if it looks like this. Um, the card, I think, or the energy, I think, that we should adopt is the Knight of Cups energy. These are the first two cards that popped into my head, so it is intuitive, but I'm sticking. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Learning and studying the tarot isn't going to help you very much if it causes burnout. It's going to be, of course, much more valuable um, if we learn that we do not, in fact, have endless energy to give. To keep going because the thing that happens is that we get impatient and I know this I've, I'm also impatient about you know learning all this stuff and getting there but if you're anything like me then trust me you're never gonna get there <laughs> and I don't mean that in a negative sense I mean it sounds funny but you're never gonna get there because it's not about getting there for us who are doing that spiritual thing, who are studying the tarot or anything else, it's there is no end goal. How could there be? In the bigger picture, it's really just about the journey and about... You know what I mean? So it's not about ingesting that information as quickly as possible. Um, we should not want this. That is the ten wands, the ten flames. Um, it's it's too hot. It's too much. It's too heavy, and it causes burnout. We should rather focus on the Knight of Cups energy that is very strong, actually, but more subtle. It really allows us to actually, in the bigger picture, keep going um, endlessly, which is what we want. But it's about uh, changing our attitude towards it, changing our perspective. I'm going to explain it. <laughs> the thirst for knowledge comes from a passion, comes from a love and a curiosity. And I actually think that information should be ingested and then digested. And by that I mean um, we need to take certain breaks. Just give yourself a rest. Let it... Give yourself the time for it to marinate in your head. Whether you're learning about something as simple as the meaning of a tarot card or something as big as the meaning of existence or whatever, you need to take rests either way. Why? Because we are humans on Earth. Not taking a break will for sure not benefit the results. And um, apart from dodging a burnout, when thinking about all of this, um, I started thinking about the process of making bread. So that's my metaphor. I've never made bread a day in my life, but hey, <laughs> let's try it out. So we're trying to make bread, right? We gather the ingredients, we mix them, then at a certain point we start kneading the information. At this point we've successfully made dough. Great. Um, now what? We should really let it rest. It's actually a part of the process to make bread, the bread that we want. And that silly analogy perhaps, but I'm sticking with it. The part when we've actually made dough, that to me is like, okay, so you read the big, heavy, important chapter in the book. And on the other hand, it's, yeah, you have successfully read the tarot for a lot of people uh, all weekend. Now the part comes in where you have to let it rise, let it rest. The rising and the resting. When you rest, you rise. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about. When you let the dough rise, it expands, it gets higher, it gets better. It's an intrinsic part of the process in order to make the bread, the kind of bread that you want to eat. So if we remove the resting part of our process, reading, learning tarot, reading tarot, anything related, then we are not allowing for it to 
rise. We're not allowing for it to expand. We're not allowing for it to, you know, use up more space and actually become a part of us, mixing with our own system, mixing with not only in our brains, but in our hearts, perhaps, or in our, you know, our knowledge, I guess, our, our knowledge. And knowledge is not only in the head. Knowledge can be anywhere. <laughs> I really think now, and um, I, honestly, I'm telling myself as much as I'm telling you, that the resting should be a part of the process. It does actually make it better. Because understanding is a huge word at this moment. And I'm not talking only about the intellectual mind. I'm talking about understanding on a deeper soul kind of level where you actually went there and you understand it. It's not just words on a page. It's you, you feel it. You feel it to be so. Back to the Knight of Cups. Um, I don't know if you know about this exercise, probably you do, but um, in order to get to know the chord cards, which a lot of people struggle with, I was no excep exception, it's good to actually think of a person that you know, a person in your life, that has this energy. And you can do this in a very early stage of your learning tarot. But uh, for me, the Knight of Cups is definitely someone I love very dearly, someone that is extremely important to me, someone that is very special. And there is definitely that white and light blue energy there. So it is kind of pure, but at the same time, this guy is so much more than, you know, the prince on the white horse. That's the stereotypical thing that we've plastered on this card. This is not what it's about. It's, look at the differences. This is all fire. Ten fires. It's too much. It's too hot. It's too heavy. And here we ha actually have opposing elements. We have the water of the cups, obviously, and then we have the fire of the night. So, to me, that brings me to the night has that little flame inside of him that makes him really just conquer all. Um, no matter what is thrown at him, no matter what shit life gives you, a person with this energy will continue. This little flame allows him to, in fact, never stop, even if the road is hard. Because obviously, when we're looking at this, it's a lot of fire and it burns out quite quickly. And here, we're not looking only at fire, because let's not forget the learning and the studying and the absorbing, I'm actually already saying it, of tarot isn't only about action, isn't only about doing, isn't only the fire. Yes, we have that passion for it. Yes, we are excited. Yes, we want to do it now, and we are. But let's not forget that learning tarot is also about receptivity, that's the cups. We actually have to receive the information, understand it. We actually have to feel it. We have to be emotionally involved. This flame is actually much more balanced, maybe, because it's the flame of passion, and it's the flame of curiosity, and it's still also the flame of love. We really should accept that the fact that we need to rest um, is a part of the work. It needs to be. And the fact that every so often you need a day or two of break, you need to get away from it for a while, really doesn't make that flame go out. You know, and I get it, it's because we enjoy that massive learning, um, gathering as much information as you possibly can binge. We do, we really get, you know, excited about this, and I do too still, but it also got me thinking that, like I said in the beginning, we, we should really change our perspective and change our attitude towards this type of work, this type of practice, because we are humans and we need to accept our human form, in a way. We need to accept that we need the time off. We need to take the breaks. Here's that new perspective. 
I hope I'm going to say it co correctly. Um, I'm thinking perhaps the limits that are put on us are actually helping us in the longer term. That's how I got to my, you know, the rising of the bread theory. In fact, I actually think that it probably is exactly the way that it should be because everything else in the universe fits. So these limits, the fact that we cannot keep going without stopping, are probably there for a reason as well. It allows us to make the dough rise. And so the time that we take to rest turns out to be fruitful in itself. Let's simply allow ourselves some time to breathe every so often. And I think that it will actually be helpful in a motivational way for us to see it as a necessary part of the process when learning and practicing all of this. The last thing that all of this made me think about is a big word, society. Um, it's okay to realize that even if we are doing this whole spiritual practice thing, we are not immune to the outside world, the pressures of the outside world. Because let's not forget, we are living in a time where everything needs to be faster and better and bigger and more expensive. Even if you think you escape this type of attitude, there's a big chance that many of us are caught in a system where the bills just keep getting higher, but the paycheck is not. And all of that, all of that pressure, all of that stress can lead to us thinking that it's never enough, that we are never doing enough, that everything indeed has to be faster, better, bigger. Of course there's the counter movement, but like I said, it's, it's really hard to escape because um, we are actually con constantly thinking about being the most productive that we can possibly be, multitasking, which often actually results into not doing any task very well, making the most of your time, achieving a shitload of stuff without ever actually taking the time to pause and think, wow, I've actually made something. <laughs> and we move on to the next thing. And you know what? The only thing that hasn't gotten bigger that didn't actually expand is the amount of hours that we have in a day. And again, I don't think that this is true for everyone and I also don't think, certainly don't think that this is true for everyone all the time, but I just thought that it kind of needed a mention. All of this made me think of um, freelancers. I'm a freelancer, I've been a freelancer my entire life. I, have no, I know many other freelancers and I think actually the numbers are growing. More and more people are doing the freelance thing. And I think that's great because often the whole idea of you becoming a freelancer is because you do something creative or artistic or even if you're not, freelancers tend to really do love their job and that I feel can really easily be connected to doing all that tarot research and stuff. But within that beautiful thing in itself, <laughs> you'll probably already see it coming, it does come with a lot of strange responsibilities that most of us are not ready for. Because it's really hard to take breaks. Becoming a freelancer takes away the system that you start at a certain point in the day and you end at a certain point in the day. The set hours are gone and so we are all of a sudden thrown into having that responsibility of taking breaks. Well, I can tell you more often than not, if we do not consciously take breaks, then it's probably not going to happen. It's really hard to do. Actually, the fact is most freelancers don't take breaks and work all the time. The worst part is most of us don't even realize we're doing it. Um, speak from personal experience. I go to the park uh, with my partner. I think the solution would be either we should leave our phones at home or we just take one, you know, in case of emergency or whatever. Leave your phone at home, it's like, <laughs> it's not that crazy. Anyway, we go to the park to walk our dog and all of a sudden we realize that instead of looking at the trees, looking at the lake, looking at the flowers, giving our dog the nice kind of loving attention, we're actually looking at our screen. 
It doesn't matter whether you're actually doing work or you're chatting with friends in the app. You're looking at a, at a screen again. That's not the point of the half an hour or hour break that you just took. You dragged yourself out of the house and the first thing that you do when you're actually out in the park where it's nice, where it's actually green, there's actually some nature, there's actually fresh air, start looking at a screen. It's like, no, don't look at the screen, put down your phone and look at the trees. Look at the damn trees. Please get out of this work bubble. Because you have no idea how many friends of mine have had one or several severe burnouts in the past few years. It's really serious. It's not a joke. So we should really stop doing this and stop pursuing this. Stop thinking that this is the way that we should live, the way, you know, the reason that we are here, that this is our goal, that this is the way that we should act in our daily lives. It can so easily result into sickness. Please try to do this. You know, it's much more balanced. It's much more about acceptance and, like I said, the flame of curiosity. Um, it's the real strength. I'm repeating myself here, but just to make it clear. The thing is, we need to accept our human limits. They're probably there for a reason. The limits means that you need to take a rest every so often. Taking a two-day break from all of it will not make that little flame inside of you go out because it's the flame that never goes out. When you're the Knight of Cups, you'll never give up on your quest. You'll never give up. And in this sense, in the bigger picture, you will, in fact, in fact continue endlessly. We need to change our view on the matter. We need to think of it like the dough needs time to rest so that it can rise, so that it can actually get better. It's probably so for that very reason, so that we can actually absorb the information and understand it on a deeper level. I hope that makes sense. I think that's it. Um, I would actually like to know if someone out there has perhaps a very specific way of recuperating. How do you deal with a tarot hangover, basically, or anything else that I've addressed? Maybe you can share that in the comments. I'm interested. Okay, so let me know, and I will see you all the next time.